I come before you to ask for your forgiveness. I've failed you, gamer. I've failed you as a tech me YouTube guy, and I'm sorry. Because I've covered lots of ways to game on PC, I've shown you how to build a gaming PC, I've done a few PC builds, I've shown you a whole bunch of mini PCs, and I've made thousands if not millions of videos about handheld gaming PCs. But there is one super important area of PC gaming that is crazy big and popular. Almost half of PC gamers are using these things, and it's laptops. I've barely shown you any laptops and I literally haven't done a single gaming laptop video yet. So yeah, I am so, so sorry. Can you ever forgive me? No? Oh, okay. Well, I guess I need to delete my channel then. Oh, what's that? You say I shouldn't delete my channel and instead just finally make a video about a gaming laptop? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I'll do that instead then. Hey there, how you doing? I'm TechToWee, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. This here is a gaming laptop, and believe it or not, this will be the first gaming laptop that I've ever used. Yeah, I know, it's weird. I love me some PC gaming, but I've never even used a gaming laptop. What the heck is wrong with me? Actually, actually don't answer that. This is the ROG Zep... 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 Hyrus... Zep... Hyrus... G16. It's kind of crazy. The specs on this. I, I'm super excited to see it too. From the promotional stuff, it looks absolutely gorgeous. This was sent to me by Asus for the purpose of review. I don't get to keep it, sadly. I need to send it back. But as always, they had no say in the content of this video and all opinions are my own. Alright, I'm sick of talking, let's get into this thing. Looks like we have a piece of cardboard at the top, and a heavy box with a, a laptop inside I guess. We'll check that out in a bit. And another box that I'm guessing is the power adapter. Let's do that first. Alright, this looks like uh, we have a 200 watt adapter. That, that's a lot of juice, man. A pretty, pretty big adapter though. And now on to the main event. There it is. Wow. Oh, hang on. There's some sneaky word papers hidden in there. And a bunch of useless bullcrap in there. In search of incredible. More like in search of boring ass word papers. I'm gonna try not to destroy the plastic because I have to send this back. And maybe they, maybe they want the plastic back too. So there it is. It's metal. It's lovely. It feels great. Aluminum on the top and on the bottom. It is not that heavy. Wow. Hang on, let me, let me check how heavy it actually is. Looks like it's 1.8 kgs or uh, just about 4 pounds. Alright, let's see what they're bragging about on the outside. We got some words over here. This is the ROG Nebula display. And we've got ultra high refresh rate. 240 hertz, oh my god. This thing is OLED too. 0.2 milliseconds response time. We have NVIDIA Advanced uh, Opt Optimus, whatever that is. G-Sync, that's freaking awesome. Built-in AI acceleration. Ooh la la, fancy. I think that means that the AI will like play the games. So you, so you don't have to play the games because the AI will do it for you. That's how that works, right? And Wi-Fi 7, which I won't be able to test because I'm on loser Wi-Fi 6. Oh my gosh. Uh, g give me a minute to gawk at this thing. Holy crap. Like, like, I saw pictures of this thing on their website, but I was not prepared for this. <laughs> that is a freaking beautiful, beautiful device. Um, okay, well, what strikes me right away is the size of this trackpad. Look at that. It's like the size of my hand. I'm actually, uh, I'm super into this. Now that I see it, I realize how much I value trackpad size. The keys look great, uh, pure white with a nice font. There's a great, great shape to them. Uh, the, the, this whole thing just has a crazy high premium look to it. All these little, uh, little details. So let's do a quick tour of the device before we get going. On the left side, there's our power plug hole and a full-sized HDMI hole, a 40 gigabits per second USB-C hole, and a 10 gigabits per second USB-A hole, and a headphone hole. The keyboard is 60% style, so no numpad, customizable RGB lighting on the keyboard, and the trackpad is big. On the right side, we get a full-sized SD card reader, interesting choice, and another USB-A hole and a USB-C hole and some rubber foot strips and tons of ventilation underneath. And on the lid, you get this stylish stripe. It does light up though, uh, if you're into that. They have several different versions of this model available. This is the top end model that I have here, I think. The CPU is the all new Ryzen AI9 HX370. 
We also get integrated Radeon 890M graphics, but that's nothing compared to the dedicated GPU in this thing. We have an RTX 4070 laptop GPU in here with eight gigabytes of dedicated GDDDDR6 VRAM. And because it's 2024, we got to mention the neural processor for AI malarkey. Here we have the AMD XDNA NPU with up to 50 TOPS, well, whatever that means. My version has 32 gigabytes of DDDDR5X RAM clocked at 7,500 mega things per second. The display is a 16 inch OLED screen with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 240 Hertz refresh rate, supports G-Sync and Dolby Vision HDR. For storage, we get a one terabyte NVMe SSD running at PCIe 4.0 speed. And then we have Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and a 90 watt hour battery. Taking a look at the system, there's Armory Crate and Aura Creator. We have Cap, Cut, Dolby stuff. Oh, of course, we got McAfee, everyone's favorite piece of bloatware. And my Asus, standard Windows bloatware as well, of course. Virtual Pet. What the hell is Virtual Pet? Oh my god. Asus has a virtual pet? I clicked on him. Uh, he, di he didn't like that. Oh, he, he walks around the desktop. Uh, okay. I mean, th this is all I need to see, really. This is what you want when you buy a, an expensive laptop, a, a low frame rate flash animation quality virtual pet that walks around on your desktop. Oh, and I guess I should probably show you Armory Crate too. That's like, a, that's like the main piece of software that you're going to be using to control the device. In here, you can do things like change the RGB on the light strip and also the RGB like modes on the keyboard. But uh, the main thing that you'll be using this for other than the RGB is to change the power profile. And you can kind of switch between different profiles. I'm going to be selecting the highest performance profile for all of my game tests here, by the way. Uh, real quick before we do the game, one thing I wanted to show you, uh, I'm making a new external games drive because my old external SSD chassis kicked the bucket. So this is the Zyke drive enclosure, which supports NVMe drives. And here we get 3.8 gigabytes per second read speeds and 3.1 gigabytes per second write speeds. And the, the drive I'm putting in here is this Corsair MP600 Pro LPX NVMe SSD. This is four freaking terabytes of NVMe storage. And the speeds on this are 7.1 gigabytes per second read and 6.8 gigabytes per second writes. I'm going to use this in the Zyke drive for now as an external games drive, but what I like about this setup is that if I want to swap this over for one of the NVMe drives in my main PC, I can easily do that. This Zyke drive is pretty cool and uh, this cover comes off revealing our M.2 slot. Oh my gosh, how adorable is that? Corsair sent this SSD to me, uh, so thanks for that Corsair. I'll include a link to this in the doodad below if you want to pick one up. And this slides into the Zyke drive and locks in place and the Zyke drive has a thermal pad on top that'll disperse any heat through the entire metal chassis. And, and take a look at this. The drive has a built-in short USB-C cable, so you don't need to carry around a cable. And I can use this on my PC as well, or a mini PC or a, a handheld. This should uh, make my life a lot easier, I think. And while I'm showing you stuff, I guess, uh, let me show you this, why not? This is the Ghoulie Kit KK3 Max controller. It is super comfortable, great input quality, great sticks and triggers, and it has these paddle switches on the back that you can bind on the fly to any of the functions on the controller. I keep meaning to do a review of this thing because I love it so much. This is my current favorite controller. So with that out of the way, let's see how the Asus Zephyrus G16 does with gaming, shall we? Oh, of course, you can't game without McAfee checking in to remind us that we only have six days left to sign up for total virus protection. So helpful. Holy crap. Oh, just let me take a minute to say, wow, this thing sounds incredible. We're not here to play indie games though, so let's jump right into good old Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And we're gonna start by going all out. Here we are at the max possible settings with ultra ray tracing enabled, and we are running at 1600p quality DLSS with VSync off. We actually got 75 FPS on average here. That, that's amazing. 
The, the game looks amazing graphically. It, it's smooth as heck, perfectly responsive, and it looks incredible on this 16p OLED screen with ultra ray tracing. That is impressive. And then I wanted to lower the settings to something a little more modest so that I could get the FPS up and see some higher refresh rate gaming on this screen. So I went down to the high settings, ray tracing off, and sticking with 1600p in quality DLSS. And I got 111 FPS on average like this. And you know, uh, it, did, it did feel smoother, but not like way smoother. Yeah, just a bit. That G-Sync really does help a ton at the lower frame rates, uh, making them feel smooth. And then I wanted to see a high refresh rate experience. So here I'm running with the low settings and I actually went with ultra performance DLSS. But I was surprised to see that the frame rate wasn't all that much higher. It, it's higher. Sure, I got 151 FPS on average like this and it's so crazy smooth. It's kind of nuts how smooth it actually feels. But I was kind of expecting a higher FPS considering I lowered the graphics, right? Down. Actually, the game still looked great. Uh, so at one point, I even checked to make sure that I was actually on low. But yeah, this game uh, it looks amazing, even on low. And a lot of that had to do with the quality of this OLED screen, to be honest. It's just freaking gorgeous. So at this point, I wanted to pull out all the stops and see how high I could get the FPS. So I went right down to the lowest possible settings. And then I went right down to 720p with ultra performance FSR. So I was expecting the FPS to go crazy high, but this is so weird. I only got 152 FPS on average, basically the same as the last test. The GPU and the CPU were both at under 40% utilization. So obviously there is a bottleneck somewhere else in the system. I, I can't explain this, to be honest. If, a, if any of you have an explanation for this, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to figure it out because I'm stumped. Anyways, let's try some other stuff. Here's Black Myth Wukong, 1600p, DLSS set to uh, like 70%, very high preset, ray tracing off, frame gen on, and interesting, just 63 FPS. Huh, well, let's turn off frame gen then. Wow, only like 40 FPS. Okay, so this, yep, this game is brand new and obviously pretty demanding. Let's uh, see what we could do here. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this is better. So this is DLSS down to 50%, frame gen on, and the high preset. And now we're getting some good performance. I ran this for a while and I ended up with 88 FPS on average. So obviously you can't go all out on the latest games on this system, but you can totally play them at great settings. And let's round out our tests with my other favorite benchmark game, The Witcher 3. This is 1600p, no frame gen, with ray tracing turned on, including reflections and shadows and ambient occlusion. Ultra settings, basically as high as it can go, but with performance DLSS. And this is actually running pretty great. I averaged about 70 FPS like this. Totally playable and enjoyable, but uh, we're, we're paying that RTX tax for sure. So with the ray tracing disabled, we go up to 95 FPS in this area. And this is how I would personally be playing this game. I like ray tracing effects, but I'd rather have higher FPS personally. Ray tracing generally isn't worth it for me, but at least you can play with ray tracing here if you don't mind the sacrifice. And uh, I played a bunch of other games, but I didn't do benchmarks or whatever. I, I just wanted to use the laptop and see what it was like to actually game on. And honestly, I, I was just gawking at the screen the whole time. The screen on this thing is just, the, the video does not do it justice, trust me. It is just about the nicest screen that I've ever seen in real life. And every single game looked amazing on it. Not, not just the big bombastic fancy graphics games, but even indies and stuff. Everything, really. The lights are so crazy bright, super dense, saturated colors and dark, dark inky blacks. Beautifully smooth with that high refresh rate and G-Sync. And the sound out of this thing just oh, blew me away. It, it's so loud and super crisp and clear, super bassy. When you hear this thing in the room, it sounds like a freaking stereo. Gaming on this thing is just such an experience because of the screen and the sound. And the actual device is uh, amazing. It's a, it's a thing of beauty. The build quality is just incredible. I'm not used to super high-end laptops, so I don't know. Maybe they're all this nice, but I would not hesitate to buy this exact machine if I was in the market for a gaming laptop. And I had the money to spend, of course. There are a few minor niggles I have. I didn't like that the power adapter is proprietary. I would have preferred USB-C or at the very least as a kind of barrel jack standard connection instead of the square connection thing that means you have to buy replacement adapters from Asus. And also the bloatware. Obviously, you can un uninstall that stuff 
stuff, but it's it's just annoying to have to clean up the laptop so you're not getting freaking McAfee pop-ups interrupting your games. And the only gripe I have hardware-wise is the heat. I, I didn't notice any heat when it was on the desk, and the fans did do a good job of keeping it cool without getting crazy loud. But when I was using this in my lap, I, I did notice the heat then. This uh, part up here, up at the top, it, it was actually hot to the touch. Not just warm, but hot. But I was pushing it as hard as it could go during that time, so I guess that's understandable considering the performance. The only major downside, I guess, is going to be the price. Yeah, you get so much here, but this is multiple thousands of dollars. This is $3,300 Canadian from the ACES website. <laughs> That's a lot of loonies. Uh, maybe you can find it cheaper if you shop around, but you're not going to find this for cheap. This is top of the line and you pay for that privilege. But if you want the best of the best, I can't recommend this one enough. I am so sad that I have to send it back, but eh, that's okay because maybe Asus will send me another laptop to show you guys. And I hope even if you don't want a fancy gaming laptop that you at least enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up button if you did or don't if you didn't. And that's it from me for today. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.